Up to this point, we've discussed normal operations, but pilots need to recognize the possibility that emergencies can occur and be prepared. So let's look at what to do if an emergency arises. If on takeoff roll, the engine doesn't sound right or the airplane feels strange, don't hesitate. Reduce the power and abort the takeoff. If you have an engine failure immediately after takeoff, don't attempt to turn back to the runway. Your chances of making a 180 degree turn with a dead engine while in a climbing attitude at a slow airspeed are not good. Instead, get the nose down quickly, maintain flying speed, and make the best landing you can under the circumstances. Your instructor will simulate engine failures at cruise altitude. As always, your first concern should be to fly the airplane and establish the best glide speed. After you've done this, look for a suitable landing field. The goal of any forced landing is to complete a safe landing in the largest and best field available. You want to touch down in a normal landing attitude with the airplane under control. If you are above a thousand feet, first trim the airplane for best gliding airspeed. Flying the airplane is always your number one priority. Select a landing site and spiral down over it. Set up to enter on a downwind leg for a normal pattern just as you would at your home airport. In any emergency, while still maintaining aircraft control, perform the emergency procedures checklist for your airplane. See if you can identify what caused the engine problem and correct it. A cardinal rule is never try to stretch a glide. It not only doesn't help, it actually works against you. When you pitch the nose too high, the increased drag causes a steeper descent. The simulated forced landing should be discontinued when it's apparent you can make the field. As a rule, forced landings are not practiced solo.